Shut up, compressor. Hey everyone, Matt here with Dugues Models, and welcome to part 4 of the Tamiya F4B Phantom build. Now, part 3 was entirely focused in the cockpit, dealing with, you know, the Quinta decals, painting the pilots, painting the seats, getting everything pretty much set. So everything pretty much below the level of this sill plate here is in a good place. And now it's time to move on to the rest of the airframe and basically get everything built. But first, I need to go ahead and deal with a few things. Namely, I started paint on the fuselage sides where the intakes will go, because once the intakes go down on here, getting into these little areas will be a huge pain in the ass. So I want to finish that. This is basically just black primer and a first coat of light gold gray. It needs more than that. So we'll be dealing with that. But before I even deal with that, I need to go ahead and get the sill plate sorted out because, you know, F4s are tall things. They've got big, giant sides. They've got the huge intakes here. So getting into them and getting around them is a bit of a tricky thing, right? You know, if it's sitting up here, the pilot's got to clamber up. If they're using the actual, like, little aircraft ladder, there's a lot of kicking and stuff on the sides. But even, even then, once they get up top, you have feet all over these sill plates all the time as, you know, the ground crew is moving around to make sure things are set up in the cockpit. The Rio's coming up here and moving back this way to get into its, into his seat. Like, there's a lot of foot traffic on these sills, and they get pretty scuffed up. So I need to go ahead and deal with that scuffing now before I mount the cockpit into the fuselage. Because once it's in there, man, it's going to be a huge pain in the ass to uh, mask around things, especially with the pilots and the seats in place. And they have to be in place because... Especially up here, I can't get this guy out. And I can't get him back in with the sill plate installed. So, let's go ahead and get this extricated. And so I've been giving a lot of thought the past few nights about how exactly I want to tackle this. Because, you know, chipping up the sill plate, we've got this here. This would be easy if it was just this. But we've also got this little thin border on the fuselage halves that also needs attention. So, what I am going to do... This is extremely basic and dumb. It's basically, remove the cockpit. Come on. Why is it gripping so good up there? There we go. So remove the cockpit, set it aside. Get everything else back together. And my plan is basically just to mask off the insides, mask off the outsides, more or less. And drop this fucker in place. Just like so. And then do all the painting and all that shit that needs to happen while it's sitting here. Do the painting, do the chipping, get it all sorted out. So that way I can come back in and glue it down later without any real consequences tricky part will be getting the sill plate glued securely, but I'm not that worried about that because there's the, uh, you know, eventually we've got the windscreen coming down here, we've got the mid canopy thing sitting here, and we've got an end piece sitting back here. So everything will hopefully kind of hold itself in place and, you know, PVA should be enough to kind of lock down what needs locking down, I hope. Okay, first up is a layer of Moto T023. You may have seen this from previous adventures, such as the P38 gear base. But it leaves a nice, interestingly textured silver metal base kind of thing. And I've cut it just a tiny little bit with some Mr. Leveling Thinner. And yeah, it looks like shit as it goes down, but it really does calm down as it dries and it gives an interesting patina that really doesn't matter but what the fuck 
Next up, we've got a quick spritz of hairspray. And next up, it's time for a haphazard coat of some Tamiya XF4 Yellow Green, which is a great stand-in for Zinc Chromate. Now I'm going to step the MAC valve way down. Just do a little bit of stippling here. And now it's time to chip this up. So we've got some water, got a ratty brush. Get this thing wet. Remove most of the water. I'm going to chip the starboard side first because it's going to be kind of the least chipped up. Force drying here. And then because I have to pack it in for the night, and I also don't want to deal with the possibility of lifting away more of the chromate when I do the top level chipping, I'm going to cover this with a coat of MRP semi gloss. Okay, now it's time for another coat of hairspray to come down on top. And now it's time for some night camo black for the sill plate. Okay, now let's get on with some chipping. Okay, I think that will work. And finally, a quick spritz of some MRP semi matte. And here we have it. Get it all chipped up. Lovely and battered cockpit sill. Nice. Now I want to do a quick look to see how this looks with the cockpit in place, and then I'll take it back out, and we need to pay a bit more attention to the sides of the fuselage before closing everything up. 
And here we are with everything unmasked and the cockpit in place. And it's looking pretty good. Although, I will note with the Rio station in place, there is this weird, like, hop in the plate. It's like a, something in here isn't wanting to sit down the way that it normally does. And I can't quite figure out what. It doesn't look like it's hitting the Rio or anything like that. I don't know. We'll figure that out in a few minutes. Anyway, all that's looking pretty solid. I think we're in a good place to move on to cleaning up the paint on the fuselage sides and then moving on to closing everything up. Okay, now it's time to come in and give the light gold gray on the fuselage sides a little bit more interest and also to warm it up a little bit because spraying it on black does cool it out. And the first color up is some dark gunship gray. Next up, some sand gray. Next up on the menu is some PRU pink. It's a strange color to put under gray, but trying to warm things up. Pink will do the job. Next up, I'm going to bring in some MRP light gray. The reason for this being that a lot of the F4s that I've seen being built recently seem to be strangely dark. And I want to try to fight against that. And one way to do that with sandwich shading is to introduce light colors. And this is basically helping me calm this stuff down before I come in with the light gold gray. So we've definitely got some personality going on in this gray now. Should look pretty good once we put the light goal on top of it, but I've got one more color to go through first. Okay, so the last color before we move back to the light gold gray is some cleared out linen. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. We don't need too much going on there. And now it's time to move on to the bell of the ball, MRP light gold gray. Now, because this is something of a blend coat, I'm also adding in some drops of Mr. Leveling Thinner just to dilute it up a little bit. Okay, so there we have our light gold gray. Maybe a bit more blended than I would like. We can always come back and shade some of that later. The important part is getting color behind where the intakes are going to be. And I think we've accomplished that. And now it is officially time to glue the fuck out of some shit. So I'm going to start up here at the nose radome area. Got this nice little line. Okay, some extra thin into it. I'm going to edit out all the fun shit where I just sit here and hold things tight together for a while. Next, I've got the little blocks back here to glue. So Nice of Tamiya to leave some gaps where I can actually access that from. Now, the reason I've got this little strip of tape here is to hold the sill plate in place 
and also to keep the fuselage sides nice and tight up against it so that when I'm gluing stuff from the inside, I don't really have to worry about making sure that everything is the right depth. It's just going to be held where it needs to be held. So we've got these two tabs that play a pretty big role. But then we've also got, way down here, cockpit sidewalls, or the side consoles. Make sure that stuff gets a hit. Okay. Now I think we're free to start moving our way back. Okay, next we're going to glue the back here. Make sure this is all nice and aligned. as aligned as I can get it. My favorite thing about this particular join is it may look shitty, and it doesn't matter at all because this is where the arrestor hook goes. I'm glad to me I learned that lesson because their 132nd scale kit has this whole thing as like a drop-in piece and Academy copied them and made it a huge pain in the ass because it puts bare metal and a join line and paint right all up on top of one another and it's just not cool at all unless you can really nail the fit which I don't trust Academy to do. Now I'm going to try something for this top thing. So this spine has to be glued, but it also has this whole top piece that sits on top of it. So I think because I can access this through down here, what if I just plop the spine on and kind of focus on this without focusing on the internal join. And then I worry about the internal join second. Move some shit so y'all can maybe see what I'm doing here. Okay, so, I mean, the fit of this is pretty damn good. It's not 100% perfect, but it's close as you can get in modeling. Nice! That worked out really well. I can go in here, add a little bit of extra strength. Make sure everybody's happy. And there we have the fuselage. Alright, now it's time to go ahead and bring the fuselage and the wings together. Every kitchen fit like this. Alright. Start gluing along these aft lines here, which are going to have to be repaired a little bit. I'm pretty sure there's not a panel line right there, but not a big deal. Before I glue the wings proper, I'll go ahead and man. <laughs> it's the big moment of truth thing. 
gluing the wing root. All right, now we're gonna flop over here to the underside. Okay, there we have the F4, wings, fuselage, all that stuff in a nice happy place. Yeehaw. Okay, so now that the cockpit sills have been scuffed up, the cockpit installed, the fuselage closed, the spine installed on top, the wings installed, and the four lower plate installed, I think this is a good time to go ahead and call this installment done because what comes next is the intakes. And honestly, those are probably worth a whole installment on their own. And just coming off of a really long, grueling installment on the cockpit and the pilot and the Rio and the ejection seats and all that stuff, I don't really wanna do two big chunky episodes back to back. So yeah, nice in and out scuffing main assembly of the fuselage and wings and we will pick back up shortly with the intakes so as always thanks for watching hope you all found this useful and catch you all later okay just one more shot and then i can wait what the fuck are you doing here You didn't see that.